kuweka particularly in Leicester, in the district of Leicester, where we have got a large group of Muslims, the Hindus, uh, we have got uh, the Hare Krishna, Buddhists and atheists. And um, a few months ago, I was uh, witnessing on the streets of Leicester. Uh, after preaching a sermon uh, about the love of God for all that Jesus died for everyone, including uh, all these other faiths, a group of my Muslims uh, captured part of my sermon which said Jesus Christ was the sovereign king and that he was the king of kings and the kings that were referred to were us human beings. And uh, what happened is uh, they saw me witnessing one people in another location and they came, they were asking, uh, they wanted to know if uh, this was true, that uh, they were also kings. And uh, I explained to them, uh, they, they, God created them uh, and us together in love and uh, that uh, he wanted to bless them and they, they challenged me, they said uh, if I could prove that Jesus, that Jesus was real, then they would convert from Islam to Christianity and uh, when, um, when they said this I, I told them I could not only prove them, to them that he he was real, but that he also loved them. And uh, they, they say they challenged me to say I should show them uh, that Jesus was real. And uh, I asked if any one of them had any pain or any sickness on their body. One of them rolled down his sleeve and he had a deep cut on his elbow with stitches. And uh, I told him I was going to show him that Jesus loved him. I put my hand on his shoulder and commanded the pain to go in the name of Jesus and Jesus took away the pain he started swinging up his hand and uh, the, uh, the, his colleagues could not believe what was happening they thought it was black magic but I told them I did not make black magic with the name of Jesus and uh, this young man shouted he was no longer a Muslim but a Christian because he had seen what Jesus had done for him that this Jesus was real he was not he was not only real, but he, he was alive and still loving and he still performing miracles. And this, this lad was, was, was the him and he went, he went celebrating his healing and the others were asking if they had any sickness, if they could come for healing. And I told them, Jesus still wanted to heal them. He loved them. And uh, the second testimony was, uh, I was in a train. From Birmingham to Leicester, and I met a lady with two sons, 111, 110 years. And this lady, I did not know she was a pagan. She, one of one of her sons, the young one, had had a sore shoulder. He had been suffering from this pain for a, for a week, and um, they came and said where I was. Then. Um, started complaining because the pain was, was getting worse and worse. And I told the mother that I had authority to use the name of Jesus to command the pain to go. If she wanted, I would, I would, command, I would command that pain to go. And she allowed me to do so. I put my hand on the shoulder of the son, the 10 year old son, and Jesus healed him immediately. And uh, she was in tears. And she could not tell me why she was crying. But as we were approaching later, she told me she separated, she was divorced from the husband because he was uh, violent on her and uh, she lost the custody of the children. She had only recently been given um, two weekly uh, visits only over the weekend to see the, the son. And um, I'm still witnessing to her through um, the internet uh, because she emailed me, I've been telling her about Jesus, that's only when she revealed she was a pagan. And uh, this lady is, uh, is happy that Jesus uh, healed his, his son and uh, that he, he wants to heal her emotional wounds. He, she has been hurt so much that uh, she didn't know where to go. But uh, her pagan religion tells her that maybe one day all this will pass. But I, in my witness to her, I told her that day she's waiting for is when she dies but uh, she's missing out on what Jesus wanted to have today because uh, the, uh, the redemption that we received 
through the death of Jesus Christ was given for us in this age and the age to come. And uh, she is so excited about it. And uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I was coming up, before this time, coming from Leicester again to Birmingham. I met a young lady at the station, train station, who was going to attend a funeral in, uh, in, in uh, Bristol. And uh, on her way, she, she got to the train station, she missed the train by six seconds. And uh, she was worried that she was going to miss the connecting train here in Birmingham. But uh, what I did is I told her that uh, God had, they had a plan for her life. And uh, she could not understand because uh, she, she grew up a Catholic. But she did not believe that God could do miracles for her as well. And uh, but until the previous day, she started seeing when, when she was um, she going to a doctor, there were things that she, she was supposed to do which she could not do. But God answered their prayer. Everything was just falling in place. So in the train, I told her about Jesus. And um, she asked her how she could have a relationship with Jesus. And I led her to the Lord. She was weeping from Hinkley until she got into Birmingham. But when she, after she had said this prayer, after she came out at the New Street Station, her train had been delayed by 12 minutes, the connecting train that she was worried about. She had so much joy. A week later, she phoned asking for the same prayer so that she could lead her own mother to Christ. And on Easter weekend, she led her mother to Christ, when she was just only a one-week-old Christian.